Welcome to Retirement Rescue Radio, a show specifically designed to help retirees and pre-retirees maximize their financial efficiency so you can live the retirement lifestyle you've always imagined. Your host is Nate Miller, investment advisor representative and author of the CPR Retirement Rescue Roadmap. Nate discusses thoughts and ideas from some of today's most knowledgeable professionals in the field of finance. He offers strategies along the way to help you make better financial decisions so you can maximize your retirement. This is Retirement Rescue Radio. Hello and welcome to another episode of Retirement Rescue Radio. I'm your host, Nate Miller. And today I want to set the record straight, really, on a financial topic here, a financial product that I think is one of the most misunderstood financial topic or financial products, but can be extremely powerful when used right. And that is the word annuity. And the reason I want to go over this is I, I heard recently there was an interview by one of the guys that has become famous for uh, the whole I hate annuities and so should you marketing strategy that he uses, Ken Fisher. And literally, they went step by step through everything that he said about annuities and dismantled it, basically. And it, it, I I come from a unique perspective where I used to consult financial advisors all over the country for a number of years. And so I've spoken to advisors who love annuities. I've spoken to advisors that hate annuities. I've spoken to advisors that are neutral on annuities. They just use them as a tool in a toolbox, right? We all have financial tools inside of our toolbox. Some of us have more tools than others, and we know how to use those. Some better than others, right? Um, and so, and actually, that's an important thing. I say this in a lot of my meetings uh, with clients is that all these financial investments out there, that's all they are. They're just tools, right? Um, you know, a, a, someone building a house might have a toolbox with a hammer and a saw and a, uh, nails in it, you know, ha has a toolbox, right? Well, as financial professionals, we all have toolboxes too. Only our toolbox doesn't have hammers and saws in it. It has investments. It has stocks, bonds, mutual funds, annuities. It might have, it might have CDs. It might have um, real estate investment trusts. It might have inverted Ukrainian gene splicing fund, whatever, right? <laughs> Credit default swaps. And, you know, let's just make up uh, words that make us sound cool at cocktail parties. That's, that's really what the financial industry, I think, is, is doing here. Um, but there are so many tools, and annuity is just one of those tools. And guess what, guys? Each tool does something different. You know, if somebody tried cutting a board with a hammer, it wouldn't work very well. Um, it, it, you'd finally break it, but it would not be a clean cut. And the same can be said about any other financial tool as well. I mean, if someone is looking for a lot of growth, well, then the CD is the wrong tool. If somebody's looking for safety, well, then the stock market is going to be the wrong tool. And so it's just a matter of having access to all of the tools and then just going into your toolbox to actually reach for the tool that is needed for whatever the client needs. That is what we do. And so and that's important to know as well to bring to bring up because what I have found a lot of times, almost every single time I've ever read an article that is negative on annuities, I'll look at you know who is writing it, and you know it's usually some financial advisor, and then I'll look that financial advisor up and find out how he's licensed. And guess what? Almost every single time. The advisor is not licensed to sell annuities, so he doesn't make any money off of annuities. So guess what? His his, his opinion is going to be a little bit biased, right? Uh, one, if he's not licensed to sell annuities, he probably doesn't know how all of them work. And, and two, he's not making any money. He wants you to keep all of your money with him and not go into an annuity. So he's uh, going to be a little bit skewed, a little bit biased. And and honestly, and, and I'll say this right now, I am licensed to sell annuities. So me doing an article on, that is pro-annuity uh, could also be a conflict of interest because yes, I make money with annuities. However, I'm also licensed in the security industry so I can manage money. I'm a series 65. And so um, that is, is how I'm licensed. And so what I've seen, when I, that perspective I mentioned a while back ago about um, I used to consult financial advisors. I would consult financial advisors um, that were, some of them were insurance only. So all of they did was sell annuities and life insurance and others were those that were, you know, securities only. And then others were, were both. And what I found, what I noticed was the clients of the advisors that 
did not take a one side fixes everything stance, right? Had happier clients. The ones that took more of the balanced approach had happier clients. Because I, I've uh, mentioned a lot of times that usually from a financial standpoint, if you're looking for financial advice in retirement, the two industries that you're going to run into the most are going to be the insurance industry and the securities industry. And like I've always said, if someone is only insurance or only securities, guess what they're going to recommend? They're going to recommend what they have uh, because they, they, how would they make a living doing anything else, right? And so the way we look at it is let's just be in both of those worlds. So now we're not trying to jam anyone you know, one way or the other. We're basically looking at all the tools to find out which tool works best instead of making everybody look like a nail because the only tool we have is a hammer. Right. And so that's what we would like to uh, say here is I want to give more of a balanced approach to annuities. And I'm going to do it uh, through the one of some of the biggest, um, I want to say, uh, arrows that are shot at annuities. I, I guess, you know, one of the biggest negatives, I guess, you know, when, when somebody says, oh, they don't like annuities for X, Y, Z reasons, what are those reasons? Let's go through those. And let's go, we're kind of going to go through those based off of how Ken Fisher talks about them as well, because I would say he doesn't mince words when he talks about annuities. Um, one of the things he does claim is that he says that annuities have nosebleed level fees. And here's another issue that I have with all the articles that I read about annuities is they never talk about what type of annuity they're talking about in the article. So I want to do that here as well is talk about the different types of annuities. Most annuity articles, when they're talking about badly, when they're talking badly about an annuity, nine times out of 10, it's a variable annuity. And, and they don't they don't talk about a fixed annuity. They don't talk about a fixed index annuity. They're not talking about immediate annuities. They're talking about variable annuities in most of these articles. And, and the fact that annuities have nosebleed level fees um, is pretty true for one type of annuity, but not all types of annuities. Uh, a fixed annuity, just to talk about how the different annuities work right now, a fixed annuity is it works a lot like a CD to where if you have a fixed annuity that says you have a, a five-year fixed annuity that's paying a 5% uh, interest rate, well, guess what? You're going to get 5% every single year for five years, and there's no fees attached to that. It's going to do exactly that, 5% for five years, no market risk, and that's it. That's a fixed annuity, no fees at all. Uh, a fixed index annuity, some can have fees, some don't have fees. Uh, and so you can pick and choose which one, which ones you want and choose to have one that doesn't have any fees. Um, but most of the time for the variable annuities, we notice that they will almost always have fees built in. Um, inside the sub accounts, which is basically the, the investments inside of the variable annuity, those will have what's called sub account fees. Um, think of those as like a mutual fund expense ratio. It's just the fee to, to run the sub account itself. They usually have that. Um, they usually have a mortality and expense fee. Um, they usually have some type of administrative charges that are built in there. Um, and then if they have an income rider attached to it, the income rider will usually have a fee as well. So there are a lot of fees inside variable annuities, but that is the only one that I normally run into that could have those quote nosebleed level fees. You can, every other type of annuity out there can actually be, uh, it can, can be gotten without fees. So that one is only correct on one type of annuity. So it's very misleading when he says that. Um, and, and also what are they getting for those fees? An argument can actually be made they are getting value, especially on an income writer. An income writer gives the ability to have a lifetime stream of income that you're never going to run out. And what's the number one fear of retirees? Running out of money. And annuities are the only financial products out there that will guarantee a lifetime stream of income no matter how long you live. Not one of several. They are the only type of financial vehicle that will do that. And so I would say there is value there. Um, and you know, Ken Fisher also makes the assumption that annuities don't even do what, what the, uh, investors want them to do. And I'm like, really? Because well, usually what they're wanting them to do is have increased confidence that they're not going to run out of money. And since annuities <laughs> will actually allow them to not run out of money, then they're doing exactly what they're doing. And, and as a matter of fact, um, Ken Fisher would rather have you put your money with him and his plan to take money in retirement is going to be taking out a 4% withdrawal rate, uh, right? Because if anybody's familiar with the 4% rule that came about in the mid-90s, they say you should only take 4% out of your uh, investments every single year if you have it all in the market, and you got a pretty good shot that it should last your entire retirement, right? Well, now a lot of um, economists are saying that the 
uh, the approach that was used or the the environment, the market environment at the time that the 4% rule came out are outdated now. And so economists have kind of adjusted that down to 3%. So that means if you have a million dollars using Ken Fisher's way, you can only take out about $30,000 a year. And that's, and you may be might have your money last your entire life. Whereas if you did put that some of that into an annuity, they can guarantee that income stream will last the rest of your life without the market risk. And so there's there's that trade-off. So I would call that one wrong again. Um, here We also hear that sometimes putting money into an annuity can create tax issues. And I'm going to hit that one too, because I used to do taxes. Tax planning is part of our uh, process in our uh, in our planning process here. And according to uh, Fisher, he, when he says that, it's got it's, it's just false because 95% of annuities are funded with IRA money, tax deferred money. And when you put an IRA uh, money from, if you move money from the market into a, uh, an annuity, it's still an IRA. So when it comes out, it's taxed exactly the same. There's no difference if um, if you have an IRA in, in TD Ameritrade or Fidelity or Schwab, and then you put it into annuity, there's no difference in the taxation. It's exactly the same. So there's, there's, and since 95% of them are funded like that, that is also misleading, in, I, I would say. Um, so yeah, that's an issue. Also, the, he says that they are not liquid. The annuities are not liquid at all. You can't get out of them. And here he's sort of right on that. I'll, I'll give him that. Um, annuities do have surrender fees. You do have to commit them to some time. Um, but I would also ask this. If you have an annuity that is going to give you a lifetime stream of income in the future, you're never going to be able to outlive it if it has cost of living adjustments and if it has some type of extra benefit for some kind of long-term care uh, features, like it, it might double the income. There's a lot of home health care doublers. I'm putting that in, in uh, parentheses where the income will double for a period of five years if you have some type of a long-term care event happen. And, and so that helps give you additional long-term care protection. Uh, so if that's the case, why would you want to get rid of that? You know, um, I really can't think of why <laughs> you would want to get rid of that. Um, and also, Fisher charges fees for his investing as well. So a little disingenuous there, I, I think. Um, he also says the contracts, the annuity contracts are huge. And I would say, yeah, they're decent size. But let, I want to tell you this, you want them to be. You want those guarantees, lifetime income guarantee, long-term care, whatever, you know, cost of living adjustments. You want that in writing. You want that to have a boatload of legalese behind it, right? But I would also say this. I've seen the size of some per prospectuses, like the stuff that, that Ken Fisher would have. And annuity contracts are no bigger than most pr prospectuses, right? And, and so, again, that's not really as complicated as what he is, put, uh, I want to say, making it out to be. And also um, another issue is people will say that um, annuities, they're only good for the advisor that sold them because they get a you know a commission. And I've, I've heard Ken Fisher say that. And um, also that's a little disingenuous coming from a billionaire who made his money by charging fees for financial advice, uh, you know, or managing money. Uh, so that's a little disingenuous for someone who's worth $7 billion from financial advisory businesses to say that the only person that benefits is the financial advisor. So um, yeah, I, I would say that's an issue <laughs> with, with, with his, uh, statements as well. And, and so that's, that's it. So I would say annuities are a great tool to be used if they're used correctly. So we got that fixed annuity that I talked about earlier. I don't think I went through all the different kinds <laughs> when I said I was going to talk about the different ones um, that I mentioned the fixed one. We've already talked about the variable annuity one. Um, there's also a fixed indexed one, which still has principal protection, meaning if the market goes down, you don't lose money, but then the growth is actually tied to some type of market index. And so that you can usually get better than CD rate returns, right? Um, by doing that. And those usually have income riders and um, can have some long-term care protection as well. And, and those by and large are the ones that end up getting used the most in our practice as well, simply because we find they have the most benefits. And since the vast majority of our clients are retirees, one, they like the safety, two, they like the lifetime income, and three, they love the uh, ability to have some long-term care protection as well without having to go out and you know get you know spend thousands of dollars out of pocket by buying long-term care insurance. And, and so there's a lot of reasons that annuities are actually good. Good. Um, if used correctly, and if they're the right ones for the right situation, that's it. Just like everything, I feel like annuities are 
um, given a bad rap because they may be missold, like sold to the wrong person or the wrong type of annuity sold to the wrong person, that could be an issue. And that's usually going to be, you're going to run into that problem when that's all that the person has to offer you is just annuities, right? So that's why I feel like it's very important to work with a financial advisor that doesn't work just in one industry, either insurance only or securities only. They work in both sides. So now they can just look at their entire toolbox and figure out, well, which ones does this client need? And then let's just have them use that <laughs> instead of just trying to jam them into the only thing you have. So um, I think I'm going to start rambling here if, if I don't shut this down. But those are the basics, I would say. And uh, hopefully I've given a fair and balanced viewpoint of annuities. Um, yes, there is some illiquidity. You got to tie them up for a little while. But you know what? Why would you want to get rid of something that's going to give you lifetime income, increasing income, long-term care benefits, blah, 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 right? Um, there's a lot of benefits to it. So um, that's it, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. And um, I'm always going to be here to help empower you to live the retirement you deserve with more and more information. So take care. <laughs>